Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this video, we'll learn about uh, LTI system and especially discrete time convolution with an LTI system. Now, what is an LTI system? LTI is linear time invariant, and linear means a system that allows superposition. So if you have more than one signal, you can apply one at a time and then combine the results uh, or add the results to get the final results. So that is linear. And time invariant means that the behavior of the system does not change with time. So if you uh, work after one or try to apply a signal after six months, one year, the behavior of the system should remain same. So the combined effect is called the LTI system. Now to judge the behavior of uh, any system, uh, the technique that is followed is that we apply an impulse signal and the definition of an impulse signal is that it has zero width so width is virtually zero and it has infinite height so height is virtually infinity and the area is equal to one so the total area uh, is equal to one so that is the definition of an impulse input and what we do that we apply this type of an impulse to the LTI system which we want to uh, whose performance we want to judge so let's say it's a radio um, or any other systems whose behavior we want to see so we are applying a impulse signal and we want to see what type of an output we get the impulse signal is represented by delta so delta N for the discrete time signal and delta T for continuous time signal. We will also be using a term uh, called convolution, uh, slightly difficult to comprehend but let's give an effort. So the convolution is a mathematical operation on two functions, so two functions X and H to produce a third function yn and we use the symbol this is not a multiplication symbol but this is uh, a convolution symbol it may also be represented by simple star the, these are the uh, meanings of convolution in uh, uh, Urdu, Bengali and Hindi and uh, uh, an idea uh, what it means really is that if you have two signals, this is the X signal and this is the um, uh, impulse response, then the combination of the two uh, is giving the output or the Y and signal. And formally we define the convolution uh, in case of a discrete time signal we call it convolution sum and in case of a continuous time signal we'll call it uh, convolution integral which we'll see in the next video so the convolution sum is represented by the summation of the multiplication of the signal and the impulse so this is shifted impulse so we'll see what does this mean and this is integrated or the summation is done from minus infinity to plus infinity. And just to recall, if you remember, this is the continuous time signal and this signal is the discrete time signals. Now the question is, can we represent a discrete time signal, the signal, in terms of impulses? So yes, these are impulses, all these are impulses so we can represent a discrete time signal in terms of impulses but okay so this is a signal uh, we can see it has a zero value here zero value here 
value 1 at minus 1, value 2 at 0 and value minus 1 at 1. So uh, we can just um, draw it like this again and these are all impulses. This is one impulse, this is another impulse and this is another impulse. So. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the signal and we want to see how it can be represented in terms of impulses. So the first signal here, it is at n is equal to minus 1 and this is the amplitude. So we write that as x under bracket minus 1. This means the weight or value of the signal at that particular point. Here that particular point is n is equal to minus 1. So it is written as x minus 1. And then it is shifted from 0 towards left. So we write it that shifted impulse and delta n plus 1. Why we write n plus 1? Because n plus 1 is equal to 0 means n is equal to minus 1. So this is the technique that we follow in naming each of the impulses. So the second impulse which is at n is equal to 0 so we write it x0 because it is at 0 and since there is no shifting so delta is at n. And the third one it is a shifted at n is equal to 1 and its amplitude uh, is uh, given here so we write it as x is equal to 1 and delta is shifted by n minus 1 n minus 1 is equal to 0 means n is equal to 1 so it is uh, written like this shown here so the, uh, the the signal can be written in terms of a summation of the uh, three impulses so this is the sum of all three and uh, we can generalize this uh, can start from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, any signal not this particular signal but any signal can be written as uh, summation of the uh, magnitude and the um, uh, impulse shifted impulse and in a compact form we can write this signal to be summation of again the magnitude and the shifted impulse uh, range Now, what is the strategy of solving the problems that we... Uh, so, what we uh, will do here is that we, if we have a LTI system, we'll try to find the... Uh, and we want to find the response of the system to a variety of signals. So, we apply the signal and we want to know its response. So, the first step is to find the impulse response. So, we apply an impulse to the system and we find its response hn and let's say the response is something like this so it is do funny but i'll give an example that let's say if the input signal is a barking dog wow then the output signal as we are getting is wow 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 so this is the uh, impulse response uh, of this system now if we have an input signal like this, what will be the output? So input signal is like, wow, wow. So these are the two um, impulses. And now we want to see uh, what type of an output we will get. Okay, now there could be two types. Uh, of questions, one involving the finite series, the other uh, involving infinite series. So we'll start with the finite series first. So here's the question. We have an input as shown here, xn, and this is the uh, impulse response of the system. Now we want to find the net output of the system. If you remember, this was the formula of convolution. So output yn is uh, xk multiplied by h and k and summation. Now keep in mind that this is not delta, this is h. h is the impulse response. 
of our convolution sum we use in pulse response. Now the question is how do we get this term h n minus k? Okay, the technique here is that we'll first of all change the variables, both variables n into k. So this and this, both the variables have been changed to k and then we flip this one, the impulse response along with the zero axis. So zero axis kept intact and we flip it on the other side. So it will become like this. So this is now H minus K. And then we move it to a point further towards the left to a point called N. So this signal will now become H N minus K. That is N is shifted to uh, K, point K. Now in this case, N is negative, so that is why it will be N minus K. Actually it is minus N minus K and that will make N is equal to minus 1 or minus 2 or minus 3 or minus 10. Okay, so we were here and now uh, we will be working with these two signals. So the technique is now that we start pulling this signal. Just assume that it is on a train compartment, mounted on a train compartment, these three signals. Position N, position N minus 1 and position N minus 2. And the current location is at N is equal to minus 2. Now we'll pull till such time it coincides with the first leftmost signal. Okay, so now you can see that the it is coinciding with the first leftmost signal. So here we will have an output. Before this there is no output because there was no overlap between the two signals. And so we will call this answer as Y0 because now N is at 0. So at N is equal to 0, Y is 0. And using the formula x k h n minus k n is 0 so 0 minus k is equal to 0 0.5 now remember the magnitude of h is 1 1 all of them so 1 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 so this is the uh, multiplication of the first overlap now let's pull it further to the right Okay, so when you pull it further, now we have two overlaps, this one and this one. And same way you can see now that at n is equal to 1, the sum will be uh, multiplication of this. So 1 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 and 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. So the total sum will be 2.5. Okay, move it further. So we pull further, this term goes out, so this is overlapping, uh, no, uh, not overlapping, but these two are overlapping. So we'll get a similar result, that is 1 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 and 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. So 2.5 again, pull it further, now these two are out, only 1 is multiplying. Uh, and that is 1 multiplied by 2 so the answer is 2 and if you pull it further there is no more overlap so the answer in this case will be 0 <coughs> at n is equal to 4 n is equal to 4 no more overlap okay so the net result we can see here that at I, y0 it was 0 0.5 at y1 it was 2.5 y2 2.5 and y3 2.5 and so we can plot the signal as shown here. So this is how we uh, solve uh, the problems of convolution and this is basically a graphical technique. Uh, we'll have some other simple techniques as well. 
So the same problem we'll do. Uh, this was the input, this is the impulse response. And the easiest technique uh, doing by mathematical methods is that we can write it in terms of a number, a figure. Uh, so HN is one, one, one. So we write one, one, one. And to, to show the zero position, we put a bar underneath. So under the score, this is showing the reference point or zero point. Similarly, for the XN signal, it is 0.5 at the reference point and then uh, point, uh, then 2 at the next two points. So now, the, the only thing you have to keep in mind that the, un, the underlying points or the reference points have to be aligned when you are multiplying. So we have aligned these two and now simple multiplication 0 0.5 into 1.5, 0 0.5 into 1.5, 0 0.5 into 1.5 and then the position is the leftmost position you have to write and then 2, 2, 1, 2, then again 2 and again 2 and simple addition will give you the answer that we got. There is another technique uh, uh, that is the tabular method. So you, you create a table, HN and XN, HN111, XN0.5 and 2, and then you multiply the 2. So this is 0 0.5, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. So these were all 0 0.5 and these are all 2. Now you draw the diagonal lines. So if you draw diagonal lines, this is for the first point or the reference point, 0, 0. Then the second point is 2 plus 0. 0.5, so 2.5. The third point is 2 plus 0. 0.5, 2.5. And the fourth point is 2. So you get the same result that we got here or that we got in the uh, previous way. But this, I don't think, gives you a real uh, sense of what is uh, done. So it is better to understand the graphical method and this can be used for checking your answer. And in the final answer also you have to uh, keep in mind the align the reference points, that is important, and wherever the reference point, the answer reference point should also be there. And you can plot and it is the same plot that we got through the graphical method. Okay, our next example is of an infinite series. We did uh, we did last two examples of a finite series. So, let's see. This is the input signal. X n is alpha power n u n, and I hope you know what is the meaning of u n. That is, it is towards the right hand side of zero. The signal is present towards the right hand side of this zero. Nothing on the left, and also alpha is defined to be uh, have a value between 0 and 1 and the unit impulse HN is uh, UN so it is also uh, impulses on the right hand side and we have to find the equation for the output YN. So for our ease we just assume a value of alpha let's say it is 0 0.9 so uh, alpha power n or alpha power 1 will be 0 0.9, alpha power 2 will be 0 0.81, alpha power 3 0.729, alpha power 4 is 0 0.659. So this will give us an idea as to the shape of the plot. Okay, so now you can see from here that it is gradually decreasing 0 0.9, then 0 0.8, then 0 0.7, 0 0.6. So we'll draw it like this. So this is the shape of the input and it is since because of the UN, the signal is only present on the right hand side of zero. And uh, UN, we recall from our earlier knowledge that unit step function in time domain is like this and it is in a discrete time, it will be like shown here. So the amplitude is 1 and it is only on the right hand side of 0. So in this case also our um, 
hn will be something like this and it is going to infinity this is also going to infinity this is also going to infinity that is why we call it a infinite series okay now it's, it's very difficult to uh, uh, do it graphically by following each step or pulling each step uh, but we we have to keep in mind the same technique okay now let's first of all find the multiplication part so multiplication of uh, the two terms will be zero for k less than zero we have converted the scale to k as uh, in the last two examples also from n we have converted this to uh, scale k so for uh, k less than zero the output will be or the multiplication will be zero but for k greater than zero since this is one one multiplied by a k will be a k so it is a k so this is how we get the uh, general term of the multiplications and now uh, the summation term so <clears throat> in this equation now uh, this term we have found out to be a k for uh, k zero to n or on the positive hand side so now the output can be written as from k zero to n a raised to the power k this one and now <clears throat> we'll take help of a geometric uh, formula so this is a geometric formula that the summation of a r k is given by a 1 minus r n divided by 1 minus r now if we compare with the our case then here a is 1 and for r we have alpha and k remains k so we replace the r's with alpha so this is uh, the equation in our case so we can write it that for all n uh, we just multiply it by un. So this is the output equation. Yn is 1 minus alpha n power 1 uh, divided by 1 minus alpha. Okay, <clears throat> now to get an idea about how the plot will look like. So this was the output and we just take a couple of values of n and we had alpha is equal to 0.9 that we had assumed. So when n is 0, this term will become 1 minus alpha. So 1 minus alpha at the top and 1 minus alpha at the bottom. So this will become 1. If you want, you can just put the value of alpha, 0.99. Still, the answer remains 1. So the starting point at n is equal to 0 is 1. And then we keep on plugging the values of n is equal to 2 and 3 and 10 and 100. So you can see that it is gradually increasing 1.9, 2.71, 1, 6.8, and this becomes 9.99, which is actually 1, point, uh, 1 divided by 1 minus 0. 0.9, or it is 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So the final value is 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. So this is the uh, plot of the signal. Now, <clears throat> the, this was all for your academic knowledge. Now, with the help of a uh, MATLAB, the life has become very easy. So this is a simple uh, plot, a courtesy of Merriam. Uh, two signals, X and um, the impulse response. And then we write few lines of the plot and you get a output plot as shown here. So I'm sure by now you know what is MATLAB and you must also practice all the sums uh, to solve through the help of a MATLAB. Thank you very much. <clears throat>